Brothers and sisters, welcome back to the Behaviour Revolution. My name's Mark and it's a beautiful, relaxing Shabbat evening here tonight, Friday night. And I want to talk to you about a very important subject. Persecution. Ooh, something believers do not like talking about. It's a very unpopular subject. In fact, the picture at the top of the article here says, Persecution and unpopular promise. An unpopular promise. So we want to talk about persecution. This article that Christopher Hilton wrote a few days ago. And uh, very, very powerful. Affected me. Helped me a lot. Put a lot of my life into perspective. And I hope it does for you too. I assume you're watching this because you are part of Yahushua's bride. Uh, you've taken the steps to become part of the bride. You've repented. You've been immersed into the name of Yahushua, Hamashiach, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you've entered the true Yisrael. You've been engrafted into the commonwealth of Yisrael, the true vine. And you're on a path of overcoming with your master. With Yahusha. So, I mean, if you haven't taken those steps, not a lot of what I'm saying is going to make sense to you in your spirit. All right? It might just be words, sound bites. So, you should handle that first. But if you are part of the bride and you've taken those steps, you have to understand that after a while, as you get stronger in yourself and in your belief and in the word and reading it and particularly behaving it, mastering and practicing the behavior. After a while, you are going to be hated or persecuted. And if you don't understand that, which none of us did at the beginning, um, it can throw you a bit. It can, you know, really affect you. And, and like, because when you come out of religion, you see, religion is all about gathering together, being like minded, being in a happy place, being in a big social club where everybody loves each other, has barbecues, and, you know, dinner parties and church services and it's all love and happiness and social and wonderful. And when you come out of that into the true bride and you start getting hatred, you don't understand it because you think you're wrong. But maybe you're not, right? Anyway, I want to go into this article and everything will be explained. And I think it will put into perspective what you've been through, brothers and sisters, in the last year or two, even the last decade or two, however long you've been in Yahusha, this should put into perspective your walk and what you've been through and why. And if you haven't yet, what's coming? All right? So let's just go straight into it. It's called Persecuted. And our scripture is 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, which says, And indeed... And indeed, all those wishing to live reverently in Mashiach Yahusha shall be persecuted. All those wishing to live reverently in Mashiach Yahusha will be, will be persecuted, will be persecuted. What does persecuted mean? What does that really mean? Is there some way to get around it or some corner we can cut so we don't have to get persecuted? I don't think so. What does persecuted mean? In the Hebrew, the main part of the behavior of persecution is hate. So if you look up persecution in the Hebrew, the basic thrust of what you're going to get back, the understanding is the word hatred. So in the English dictionary, hatred means this. Let's go through this. Just listen to these words. Hate. Primitive root to hate as one of an opposite tribe or party. Hence to be hostile, to be an enemy, to be a hostile enemy. Properly to lurk for, persecute, hate, oppose self against, oppose oneself against. So we've got to be a hostile enemy, to oppose oneself against. Uh, we've got to be an enemy, to hate, to be a foe. Hate, odious, utterly correspond to hate exceedingly hateful so we've got a hostile enemy and to persecute is to hate and oppose oppose self against, put yourself against another person conflict hatred 2 Timothy 3 1 to 5 shows us the behavior to be expected of those haters in the last days 
towards all believers. It describes the behaviour of the Spirit inhabiting men. I'm going to read to you 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5 here. But know this, know this, listen, know this. Hard times shall come, for men shall be lovers of self, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, wrongdoers, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, fierce, haters of good, reckless, puffed up, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of Yahusha, having a form of reverence, but denying its power. It sounds a bit like religion, doesn't it? Having a form of reverence, what you do on the outside, how you dress, how you speak, how you, you know, a form of reverence, a form of Turinus, scripturinus, a form of reverence, but denying its true power, the power that's within you, the relationship, the righteousness that's within you. This is what's happening in the last days, fakery. So turn away from these, turn away from these. Have you felt that coming from people around you, brothers and sisters, from congregations you've left, from friends, from family, from spouses, from children, from anybody? Have you felt that come into your sphere, brothers and sisters? Yahushua told us, or Timothy did. This is going to happen. Shaul did to Timothy. So, brothers and sisters, this is some kind of powerful hate, isn't it? Powerful hate. And this is where many fail and fall back into the world, especially if it is coming from a beloved family member. Let me read that again. This is some kind of powerful hatred. And this is where many fail and fall back into the world, especially if it is coming from a beloved family member. People get, get totally bombarded in their head, shocked, devastated from the hatred that comes at them and it causes them to stumble and many times fall back into the world because of the hatred that comes at them. The shock that members of your own family and personal friends are manifesting such hatred for the one we love so dearly, to Jehusha, can be extremely damaging to our belief. And we may have to make a decision on who the righteous one actually is. Let me read that again. The shock that members of your own family and personal friends are manifesting such hatred, the shock that people you love so much are having so much hatred towards Yahusha, can really put you in a spin can be extremely damaging to our belief and we may have to make a decision on who the righteous one actually is. Is it them or is it Yahusha? Is it what they're saying and what they're practicing and the hatred and the religious behavior and lifestyle and paganism and everything they're caught up in? Or is it Yahusha's way? Some may give in to the pressure and choose the world by changing their mind. This is actually the goal of the evil one. And if we are not aware of the conditions of the times we're living in, through true instruction, we can easily be deceived. Some may give in to the pressure and choose the world by changing their mind. Remember the seed or the seeds that are sown on the pathway? One of the seeds was on the thorny, on the rocky, rocky paths, I think it was. So it didn't get any root. And when the thorns grew up, <clears throat> the thorny ground, sorry. And when the thorns grew up, the cares of this life, the persecution, the hatred, the, everything that's going on in life was more important and it choked the seed and, it, you know, it died. They went back. That's what this is talking about, brothers and sisters, the heart condition. We're all going to be tested. We are all going to be tested. Are you going to crumble, buckle, fall back into the world? Haven't you tasted what the world is like? I spent 26 years in the world before I met Yahushua. Oh yes, I was religious and wonderful and, you know, very Christian and, you know, ridiculous, total sinner. Uh, 
but I thought I was absolutely wonderful, De deluded, deceived. But I, I know what the world's like. I know the tentacles of the enemy that want to wrap it so, themselves around me all the time. I'm aware of the evil all day, every day. Evil, it's evil out there. Evil is after you, brothers and sisters, if you are in the bride company, because Harshatan hates you. And the minute you got immersed, he set his army against you to try and knock you off. So the hatred that's coming at you is completely normal. It means you're actually on the right pathway. And I'll discuss that a little bit later. So, some may give in to the pressure and choose the world by changing their mind. How many people, how many people have you met, have you fellowshiped with, have you known, have you loved, that have gone back into the world? We came up here with over a dozen people <clears throat> over a decade ago. My ex-wife, uh, you know, the best man at my own wedding a decade ago, and his wife and children, other families, and other families that got immersed and came in. There is nobody left except Chris and Victoria and myself. Nobody left out of, there probably would have been over, the, there would have been close to 20 people over the course of the last 10 years. None of them. Just the three of us. When the fire, can't, when the pressure, I should say, the fire, the testing comes, you either stand your ground and keep walking forward because your roots, you've, your heart is the good soil and the roots go down and the tree starts growing up and bearing fruit. So sometimes in the whirlwind, in the storms, you bend. You have to bend. Sometimes you might be laying flat on the ground, absolutely devastated. But if your roots are firmly planted, you will bounce straight back up and you keep walking forward, brothers and sisters. Do not turn back. Do not go back. Do not, it doesn't matter who leaves you, friends, family, wives, husbands, children, keep moving forward. Got it? This is what's coming at Yahushua's bride. This is the great expectancy, the great expectation, our hope that we're looking to. The new Jerusalem, that's where our treasures will be, not in this earth. So we've all tasted devastation. We've all tasted people leaving and falling back into the world. Some may give in to the pressure and choose the world by changing their mind. This is actually the goal of the evil one. This is the goal of the evil one, to turn the pressure up so hot in your life that you give in, you crack and you crumble. So even if you get to the end of a day and you don't feel like you did anything useful for Yahusha, the fact that you might be still standing and the fact that you didn't say anything horrible or you didn't behave anything horrible or you didn't, you know, that is a victory in itself. You are standing. You are enduring what's coming at you. And sometimes it's baby steps. Another step forward, another step forward. And as you get stronger and stronger, Yahushua will put people in your pathway to help, all right, to say things to. But it's generally through our behavior, yeah? So persecution, apart from not being a very popular message, it's a very popular thing to throw around to get sympathy out in the Messianic and Nazarim and religious realms out there. Everybody's, oh, we got persecuted, we're getting persecuted. <laughs> getting persecuted and then if you click on their name or you look at their page or you look at what they're doing and they're walking around with these hats and shirts and zits and stuff all over their cars and you know banners and everything like that I'm sorry that's not persecution that's stupidity that's like walking into a lion's den holding uh, holding cleavers of meat and wondering why your arms get bitten off that's absolute stupidity all right? Know what you're dealing with. You're being sent out as sheep amongst wolves. Sheep amongst wolves. And you've got to be cunning as a serpent and gentle as a dove. You don't go out there. The bride is incognito. The bride is hidden from the dragon. Remember a few articles ago we talked about that. Those who are out there doing all this ridiculous religious behavior, they're the tares. They're the ones who are protecting us from
from the dragon because the dragon is sending them all the persecution and all the you know, hatred and stupid because they're stupid. Their behavior is ridiculous. We are called to be set apart in our behavior, not in the way we look. Now, we have to have a certain dress standard and it's Tura, but and, and the way we dress modestly and, you know, not showing off our, our tits or our crotch or our, you know, we're not drawing attention to our bodies. That's common sense when you know Tura. But I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying that you dress provocatively. I'm saying it's not about how we look. It's about the way we behave. Our behavior is what Yahushua is moving through, is what is overcoming the evil in our behavior so that we don't spit out things, so we don't lose our cool, we don't lose our temper, so that we, we let everybody have who they need to be, who they want to be in our life, so that they can then see that we accept them and we love them. We're not challenging them. We're not uh, being uh, nasty or bitchy to them. They can see that we love them because we accept them. Not because we agree with a word they say, but because we accept them. And we're not taking anything they say personally. So brothers and sisters, this is a real heavy experience. If you're out there doing this ridiculous behaviour, the reason why the behaviour is ridiculous, I know I'm fully aware that Yahushua sent us out there to tell the world to repent. I'm fully aware, I've read the scriptures, I know it's written there. But since Yahushua left... Let me tell you what religion has done with the scriptures. Religion has broken up and formed into so many different sects that are using the scriptures as their basis and going out there with billboards and sandwich boards and, and banners and telling the world to repent, repent, repent because the end of the world is coming. So if you're out there and people are going door to door, you, you know, we're, from the, we're from the church, da, 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 da. We'd like to tell you to repent. Would you like to know J-S-U-S? You know, the whole of society is so fed up with that message. The whole of society is so fed up with this book. They don't want to know about this book. And I'm talking about the B-I-B-L-E and I'm also talking about the real scriptures. They don't, they don't know the difference. The minute you tell them anything about scripture, they've automatically decided, oh, here we go. Oh, you're not one of those, are you? Oh. They've already decided that you are insane. And so that's what religion has done to the message, the pure crystal message of the Torah, of the scriptures. That's what religion has done. That's the reputation we already have before we've opened our mouths, brothers and sisters. So therefore, you need to go out and make friends. Because a friend won't judge you based on the scriptures. A friend won't judge you like that because after a while, it might take weeks, months, years, a friend will ask you, how come nothing bothers you, mate? How come you can go through all that turmoil and all that devastation and still be happy and still have purpose and still have a direction and a routine and a plan? And when they ask, start asking you questions, they're opening a doorway for you to give a word from Yahushua, if that's what's going to happen. It's not because you've walked straight up to them after knowing them for five minutes and given them a bookmark that said, repent, you know, or, you know, do you get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to tell you you're an idiot if you're going out and doing that because you may not have known because that's what religion tells us to do and religious teachers tell us to do that too. To further their message, to further their book sales, to further their congregations. But that's not how Yahushua works. Yes, Yahushua told us to tell the world to repent. But it's through our behaviour, one person at a time. Or if you've got like a following or videos and stuff, you can, you can do it that way. People come across your videos. But we are going to be hated if you do that, brothers and sisters. Are you ready to be hated? People don't want to be hated. Why won't people walk through that door and want to suffer somebody? Why don't they want to go in and be persecuted? They, oh, they said this to me and they said that to me. Yeah. What do they do to Yahushua? Are you, aren't, aren't we following Yahushua? Yahushua? Aren't we all trying to attain to that kind of behaviour that he had? And how do they feel about him? They hated him. And he said that. Don't be surprised. Pick up your torture stake. Pick up your st stake and follow me. Those who love their lives will lose it. And those who, <clears throat> you know, follow him. 
So brothers and sisters, as we choose to walk with Yahushua, as we choose to walk with Yahushua, we have to knowingly understand that hatred is going to come to us. As we walk with Yahushua, we have to knowingly, knowingly understand that hatred is going to come to us. We need not be shocked, hurt, and carry on. Don't be shocked, don't be hurt, don't carry on. But boldly behave the fruits of righteousness. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. This is the choice of the bride. And Yahushua wants to see if she will be obedient to his Torah, to his instructions. She has a choice. You've got a choice. You don't have to listen to a word I'm saying. You don't have to. It's up to you. If you want to still go out there and dress the same way you've been dressing, doing the same thing you've been doing, make some kind of excuse to justify it all, fine. I don't mind. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. It's your relationship with Yahushua. But I believe this message is from Yahushua because it's explained why everything's happened in my life. You know, I've had hatred for the last 15 years. The minute I met Yahushua, I had hatred. I had I had hatred. The minute I met Yahusha, I got hatred. My previous marriage, previous wedding, previous everything was like a soap opera. I've had hatred non-stop from in-laws, family, my own, my own parents, own brothers and sisters, everybody. I've had, you know, siblings tell me that my children will be born with, with curses and defects because I'm in a cult, because I've, you know, backslidden from the Christian, you know, all that. And that was when I was first immersed. That was years ago. I didn't know what to do. Devastated. Cut family off, love them again. Cut them off, love them again. Did not know, didn't know any of this stuff back then. None of us did. We're just reeling and being tossed and turned by emotions, wondering why we're so hated because we've just discovered what his true name is. We've discovered that you don't have to go and do all this stuff every Sunday. You can have him inside you and we're so excited and we told everybody, oh, don't tell everybody. You're in for a shock if you think other people will be excited. And we didn't understand that people are blind. We didn't understand that people have shackles over their eyes. And unless he removes the scales, the shackles, unless he removes them, they can't see. It's not that they don't even want to, it's that they can't. So you're going out there telling them, Mum, Dad, you know, brother, sister, everyone, guess what I've just found out? Oh, that's a bit religious. We, we better go and talk to the pastor about that. And then, you know, you just get bombarded some more. And you don't always have the answers because you've just found this out, you know? So let me tell you, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm 40 now. And I know if you're 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 years old, you might look at me like I'm a, just some stupid kid. But I uh, have been around a little bit in this experience and I've suffered a lot of hatred and uh, weathered a lot of loss. And that's nothing to do with me. I don't, it's not about me. I'm just letting you know that this message to me means something to me because I understand the loss. If you're going to stand with Yahusha. Not that my behavior has been anything spectacular either, but I'm just saying, if you stand with Yahusha, you will be hated. Friends will fall away. Spouses might fall away. Are you prepared for your spouse to possibly fall away? How would you handle that? Your children disappear. How would you handle these situations? Are you gonna go and stand in Yahusha's face and mm, you know, look what's happening to me because of you? Are you going to be like that? Or are you going to weather the storm and start rejoicing? Look what happened to them when they got thrown in prison in the book of Acts. They rejoiced because it was like, a, it was like proof to them that they were doing something right. It was like they were found worthy to be suffering for the sake of the master. They rejoiced. They were happy about it. Not rejoicing because they were told they had to. You have to rejoice. Don't complain. You have to rejoice. That's how we take it, isn't it? We just want to complain so badly, but we're told we're not allowed to. No, that's not how they felt. They genuinely, because they'd met Yahusha, most of them, they'd met him, they'd walked with him. They were, so, they were so ecstatic that they were flogged and tortured for the sake of Yahusha. They were found worthy to, suffer, to, to share in his hardship. Can you go there? Can I go there? Why don't we want to suffer, brothers and sisters? 
Why don't we want to take that step and suffer what's going to come back at us if we stand with Yahusha? And like I was saying before, and this is something I'm realizing lately, um, the reason we don't like persecution is, is we think we have to go out there with a plan and a, uh, a banner and a, a, not a banner, a, we think we have to go out there with a big elaborate spiel and a mission to convert the world and then we're going to be hated for it. That's not how it works. We think we're going to have to stand our ground and tell people that's not right, you should leave. No. Nobody that's left so far from the 20 or so people I've known in Yahusha over the last decade, none of them were ever told to leave. None of them were given, everybody has left of their own accord. They have fallen away. You don't have to do anything except keep moving forward and the people will, will fall away themselves. It's their choice. You don't have to stand and tell them and do all this great stuff and then feel guilty about it. No, it's their testing. It's their walk. It's between them and Yahusha. They've been given the same message that you've been given and they have rejected him. They have rejected him and gone back into the, oh, I still believe in Yahusha. Oh, big deal. So does Satan. You know, Yahusha doesn't flog me. Sure looks like you're getting flogged to me. Look at your life. Look at your behavior. Look at the way things have gone. You can be in denial, brothers and sisters, in a delusion. If you don't have a love for the truth, if you don't have a love for the truth, you will be given a delusion. And a delusion is wonderful. A delusion is like when you're, when you're about to fall asleep or when you've had a couple of light drinks and you're just a bit tipsy. Delusions are amazing. Delusions are just like sin. They entice you and they feel wonderful. Oh, that can't be wrong. It feels so wonderful. That's what a delusion is like. It's like the Matrix. When that bald guy said, I don't care. I just want to go back into the delusion. I don't care. Put my body back in the chemical plant and put me back in the Matrix and I don't even want to know about it. Put me back into the dream because this, this real reality out here is absolute, you know, it's hideous. If you don't have a love for the truth, if you're not walking with Yahusha, he'll just give you what you want. He'll give you the delu delusion that you want. You really want to be liked. You really want friends. You really want to have social gatherings and parties and stop being such a weirdo who's set apart. You really want to go out and do stuff on the Shabbat. Do it. No one's stopping you. You really want to go and celebrate your birthday? <laughs> You know, babe, how many birthdays have you had? You know, do Christmas and Easter. You really want to go and do it. I'm not stopping you. Go and do it. Yahushua will just let you have it. Let you do it. But you will know when the favour has left you. And sadly, most people don't even care when the favour has left them. That's what they, Revelation says, many people, their love will go cold. Their love will go cold. So if your love's gone cold, I mean, that's what we're walking in, isn't it? That's what he's guiding us with, his love. We feel his love. We want to do anything. We go anywhere, do anything for him because of how much he loves us and we feel his love and we want to do that for him. So if his love goes and we just keep walking along like everything's normal and we get tested, the love's gone. Our love has gone cold. So we don't even know the di we don't even know it's just such a sad situation, brothers and sisters. As we choose to walk with Yahushua, we have to knowingly understand that hatred is going to come to us. We need not be shocked. Don't be hurt. Don't carry on. But boldly behave the fruits of righteousness. This is the choice of the bride. Choice. And Yahushua wants to see if she will be obedient to her. Remember. Remembering that seeing and understanding the times we are in will give us strength. Seeing and understanding the times that we are in will give us strength to suffer until he comes. We're in the last days, brothers and sisters. There's not going to be a zombie apocalypse. There may not be a nuclear fallout. That we may not need to be hiding underground like the ridiculous doomsday preppers and the people in the deep underground military bases. You know, we... That's that half of that's Hollywood, the other half's conspiracy, and the other half's coming from the scientific community. So when Yahushua, Yahushua said 
the days and the seasons will continue. It will be like it was, as in the days of Noah. The days came and went, people were marrying and giving in marriage parties and just living normal desires and sinful lives in society, just doing what they normally do until crack. Crack, bang, the clouds opened up the sky, the rain, and there was flood. The same will happen on the day Yahushua comes back. Everything will be normal, you know, everybody will be doing what they normally do. Society is just getting gradually, gradually, gradually worse and worse and worse. But there may not be some big, massive, global devastation. There may not be another world war, you know, and nuclear fallout and everything like that. So don't be looking for that. He could come back tomorrow. Yes, I know we, we have a strong belief that he will come back on the Feast of on the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah. However, he might just surprise us. He can do anything. He can do that. He could come back tomorrow. Are you ready? How amazing would that be? Brothers and sisters, understand the times we're in. We're in the last days where everybody out there is absolutely crazy. So if you're not wise, if you are not cunning in your behavior, it's in your behavior. The righteousness, the worship is in your behavior. Not the words you say, not the, the clothes you wear, not the congregations you attend, not anything outward at all. It's going on inside your vessel. What he is doing inside your vessel, overcoming the evil day after day after day. That is what's going to get you through to the end. That is the oil. The oil, the behavior of Tura inside your lamp is the oil that's going to get you through to the wedding feast. So brothers and sisters, understand the times you're living in. Don't go out there on some grand scheme, some grand ministry campaign to convert the world. You might get killed. And it won't be because of persecution. It won't be because... You know, you were found, it's because you were stupid. Stupid behaviour. Yahushua wants you to work in your job, make money for your family so you can feed your family, so you can achieve in life, get ahead and help people around you and love the people around you in your behaviour, in the community that you have been planted in. And he wants to see that fruit coming forth in your behaviour. Now, you can't do any of those things if you are out there being a total idiot in your behavior, getting a bad reputation in your business, bad reputation with your clients, with your customers, getting a bad reputation, not necessarily because what you are doing, because you might just think you're doing what this says, but all the men before you, all the religions before you who have used this book wrongly have wrecked it, have wrecked it for Yahushua. So now Yahushua is doing it very, very cunningly through people's behavior. I think I've stressed that point now, haven't I? I think I should stop talking now. So it's all about persecution, brothers and sisters. There's another picture here that says, are we living in the last days? Yes. And there's also another picture here that says, the cult of self. I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, and who are you to tell me anything? That's the cult of self. Some would call that Humanism, that's the major religion in the world today. Humanism, it controls religion, it controls the scientific community. Humanism, the belief in self, the belief that mankind is the ultimate El Supremo and can achieve anything you put your mind to if you go to enough self-help courses and classes and seminars and control yourself and control your mind and build yourself up and train yourself. Humanism, that we are the new deity, that mankind can do it. The cult of self. What are we going to do about this, brothers and sisters? How are you going to behave from here on in? Well, the behavior revolution has put out three rules. Let everybody have it. Don't take anything personally and don't make excuses. These three rules are put onto ourselves so that when you feel like there's drama, when you feel like you don't have peace, when you're feeling flustered, fussed up, flogged by Yahushua, you put the rules onto yourself. 
You ask yourself those rules. Not out there saying, oh, you didn't let me have that. You know, it's about putting them back onto yourself. And in doing so, you are training your behavior into the commandments, into the Torah. Because those three rules are practical examples of scripture. Every scripture can be brought into those three rules as a behavior. And if you look at the life of Yahushua, you read the Gospels, read his account, you'll see that he was letting everybody have it. He wasn't taking what they were saying personally. He faced that the world was nuts. I'm currently watching the latest season of The Walking Dead. Oh my goodness. Dealing with zombies all day, every day. It's just like my life. It's just like your life, probably. How can you reason with a zombie? How can you reason with a dead person? How can you reason with someone who is drunk on the wine of the, from the cup of the teachings of the great whore, the harlot? Everybody out there in the world is drunk. Have you ever tried to wake up a drunk person? Have you ever tried to have a serious... Serious conversation with a drunk person. Hey, this is the Ten Commandments. I'd like to talk to you about Yahushua today. Have you ever tried to do that to somebody who's stoned off their face on drugs? What kind of response would you get? That's the state of the world out there. So why are you going out there even trying? Your job is not to try and wake people up and convert them. Your job is to be watching. That's why we're called Nazarim. Because we're watchmen. Our job is to be watching to see when Yahushua wakes somebody up. You can't wake anybody up. You wearing things and declaring things and provoking little dramas in people all the time is not going to wake people up. Your job is to be watching. Watching with your eyes wide open. Not thinking about yourself, not trying to promote yourself and revolve every conversation on yourself, trying to make people look and talk about you all the time. Having genuine relationships with people during your day, friends, clients, customers, being genuine and kind, looking into people's eyes, smiling, being kind to people, doing what you know is the right behaviour, which is the three rules, because they're all scripture. And through your behaviour, Yahushua can do things. Yahushua does it, not us. Yahushua does everything. He orchestrates everything in our life. He understands the plight, the test that we are going through. He understands the devastation. He understands the loneliness. He understands everything because he walked before us. He was the first fruit and we are following him. We will be first fruits coming behind him. We're following him, brothers and sisters. He understands. He loves you so much. He loves you with everything in him. He's done everything he possibly can to draw you and woo you, put his ruach inside you, training you, disciplining you, flogging you, so that you'll bring forth a fruit of righteousness so you can overcome. Why is it that he wants us to overcome? Because the more you overcome, the more you see him. Because overcoming is putting off yourself, putting off the world, putting off the evil, which brings you into seeing him more and more and more how he feels about you, what he's done for you. And that's what he wants. He wants his bride to see him in her day. Isn't that what we want from our bride and grooms, from our husbands and our wives? For them to see us, to know us, to make us feel loved and wanted and desired. Isn't that what we want from a spouse? That's what Yahushua wants from his bride. So he's training her. So, brothers and sisters, he understands everything you are going through and he is telling you to keep going. Keep going. Don't worry about them. And don't worry about them. Let them have their madness and you keep going forward. Don't try and change their minds. Don't argue with them. Don't get involved in the affairs of this life. Don't get involved in any quarrels. We're not supposed to be quarrelling, you know. Senseless quarrels, I think it is. We're not supposed to be arguing. We're not supposed to be in heap, deep, heavy discussion and drama. And we're not supposed to be doing that. We're supposed to be moving forward in our behaviour, overcoming daily, brothers and sisters. And he'll bring people into your life to help you. He'll bring people into your life that you can help. He is doing everything. 
So don't think that he's not there. Don't think that he's not inside you. Don't think that he's not moving through you in relationships. You are on the path that he wants you to be on. And he will lead you and he will guide you. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to keep going and don't fear persecution. Because a lot of the people who have put that fear in you are religious people. And they get persecuted because they're stupid. The persecution that comes from uh, following Yahusha, yes, is devastating. But if you know it's because of Yahusha, you can stand in that. You can be safe in that. He, he comes to you right when you need him. He wraps you in his love like a big, thick, warm blanket and lets you know right when you think you're on breaking point, melting point, tipping point, right when you think you are going to crumble. He lifts you up. He supports you. He comforts you because you are his bride and he loves you more than anything else, more than all the creation more than all the angels and seraphim. He loves you. He's carrying you, supporting you, holding your hand through everything you are going through. So when you get persecuted and the hatred comes, know that it's because of him. And you want, you want to go with him because he's going to repay this earth. He is going to repay this earth when the fire comes. And before that, when the reapers come and pull out and start devastating this earth, as reaper angels of death start pulling people out of the earth, it's already happening now. People are dying. Every second person is dying of something and the society just thinks it's a coincidence. Every day there's an earthquake, there's a bomb, there's a landslide, there's a, a flood. There's just, you don't even need a reason these days. The earth just sinks and you know, massive you know, whole streets just disappear into the earth. You know, like it's happening. The earth is cracking up and falling apart. But mankind is too wise and too, oh no, that's a coincidence. That's Mother Earth. She's such a bitch, isn't she? <laughs> no, it's judgment. It's wrath, Yahushua's wrath. We're in the last days, brothers and sisters. These are the end times. So know that and learn how to behave accordingly. Not going out there for Yahushua. Mm -hmm, I'm a believer in Yahushua. Mm -hmm, yeah. And wondering why you get you know, stupid looks, funny looks and persecuted because you're being stupid. I've prattled on enough tonight, brothers and sisters, but I wanted to just share that article with you because I thought it was phenomenal and amazing. And particularly after the six months to a year that I've had where I've lost all my direct family, my children are still nearby, but you know, they may not be for long. They might be going further away. Um, my wife's gone. She went six months ago. So I understand the devastation of losing everybody around you. But I don't care because he gives you so much more. It doesn't mean I wanted them to go. It doesn't mean I didn't try and reason and stop it from happening. But after a while, you realize that oh, that's happening. That's her choice. So we go on, brothers and sisters. I love you. And if you've got questions, we're on Facebook, Behaviour Revolution. Uh, my name's Mark, uh, Christopher Hilton, he wrote the articles. If you want to ask questions, you know, talk to us. Uh, join the revolution. Come into the correct behaviour because that's the only thing that's going to get you through, brothers and sisters. Correct behaviour. I love you and keep going. You are not alone. You are not alone. You have Yahusha, but you also have all of us who understand what you're going through. And this is a real experience. So keep going, brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful, relaxing Shabbat. Don't do anything, all right? Find a good TV series, put your feet up and chill out. Read some scripture, you know, have a nice meal. Just relax, brothers and sisters. We're in Shabbat. Best day of the week. I love you. See you later.